Hey everybody, Ronaldo Walkman here on behalf of the Disc Jockey News Virtual Expo. And here in my kitchen, we have a cake. I've got a small projector over there. It's a small little LED projector that I use for practice and testing and trying out different things with mapping. But today I'm going to show you how to projector map a cake. Super easy. We're going to be using the software Arceus Grand VJ XT distributed by ADJ. There's also Media Master Pro. A Grand VJ XT is a little bit, actually it's quite a bit more affordable than Media Master Pro and it's the exact same video mapper. So let's go ahead and delve into it. Here we go. So the very first disclaimer that I want to give out is that unfortunately you're going to see a little bit of scanning lines. That's not the software or the projector. That is unfortunately how the camera captures a video even at a low frame rate. But right now we just have the projector that's covering the entire cake and the walls and everything else. So it's not as simple as just plain video and suddenly it appears on the cake. While it may look okay, it really isn't. So while this may look okay, if you look in the background, everything's on there as well. So it doesn't look quite right. This is where projector mapping takes place. Not to mention a projector mapping skill allows to really paint the individual layers of the cake. Now the very first question you may ask is, what kind of projector do I need? Well, it really depends. If you're going to have the projector real close to the cake, you're going to want a nice, bright, short throw. If you're going to go from across the room, up high, maybe hanging from trussing, you're going to want a long throw solution. An LED projector like this is not the answer. This is only for video. Uh, the other thing that's really important is having something that's high resolution. Otherwise, the images and text will look a little bit distorted. In this case, this is a 720p projector. Uh, but it doesn't run this particular projector mapping at 720t, 720p, just a limit of the projector itself. So you're going to see that some graphics may look a little bit skewed or whatever the case may be. So this is something you want to talk about with your favorite dealer, somebody that you trust, and say, hey, look, I'm going to go into projector mapping. What projectors have been real popular? Let their expertise work out for you in this part. But for now, let's go ahead and uh, fire up the software. So we've got Grand VJ, and you need the XT plugin, which is going to allow you to do projector mapping. You want to go into preferences and make sure that you're on video mapper, not instant. Once you're on video mapper, if you were on instant, it's going to say, hey, I need to restart the software. So then you'll restart the software and we're back in here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get out of there for just a second. We're going to get out of full screen. And this is essentially what I'm seeing on the cake. Now I'm going to hit my projector mapping options. It's called the video mapper. Now the video mapper for XT is the exact same one that you can find on Media Master. There's a few subtle differences, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same one. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to open up our full screen. I want to be able to have it show me everything that I'm doing live, which is really important for me. And I'm going to go to minimize these. These in red are my other projectors. And the beauty about um, video mapper and the way the Arcaeus software works is that if I switch projectors or if, even if I switch the input, it remembers it. So if I have two projectors running at the same time, I hook them up backwards, it's going to look backwards until I flip it back around. And this is really nice because that means I don't have to sit there and redo all my mapping or everything else. So over here we have the color LCD. I'm going to have this unchecked because this basically says, this little circle here says, okay, well, which screen or you know which area do you want the video mapping to appear well I want it to appear on my color LCD aka my laptop screen I want it to appear on my projector right here so I'm gonna delete this because that was what was on there a second ago and that's why the cake is now blank I'm gonna go ahead and hit the square now we have two options we can do a square surface or we can do a triangular surface don't need to worry about a triangular surface but it's nice to know that if you do have a triangular cake hey you've got something that you can work with now, regarding projector mapping, there's quite a few different ways to do this. There's even a thing called masking, which is a little bit more advanced. It makes things easier once you master it, but I'm going to do this the manual way so you can really get an idea of how it works. So we have our surface one. Now, I don't like moving surfaces. I actually like the test image. So I just go to source and I choose test image. That way I can see everything that's going on. And as I move it around, you'll see that it appears on the screen. On the edges, there's these little red lines. I'll be honest with you, I hate the red lines personally, so I'm going to shut those off. And I can shut those off just by going here where it says display surface information on full screen. Now that red line is gone and I can really see where the end of it is. So next we're going to click on edit grid. When I click on that, if I don't have this clicked, this basically just resizes it. When I click on edit grid, it gives me a lot more options and this is something that's really important. So we're going to go ahead and do the bottom layer. 
So what we're going to do is, and for me the easiest way is to literally map layer by layer. So we're going to start with this bottom layer right here. Okay, and I'm literally just coloring it just, just like a coloring book almost. I can, I don't know why I accidentally resized that, there we go. I can click this here, and you'll see that it also shows me the XY grid points so I can make sure that I hit the area that I really want. This is really helpful, especially when you're doing buildings. Bam, look at that, I'm done. I'm gonna go ahead and name this, and I'm gonna name it Bottom Bright, or just basically BR. Now the image looks a little bit distorted, you know, depending on how it's done. And we're actually going to clone this image. And I'm going to show you why in a second. We're going to go ahead and clone it. Hold on. There we go. And we're going to duplicate surface. And we're going to call this crop. And I'm going to explain to you in a second what crop is. But just start getting in the habit of doing a regular surface and then a crop surface. I'll explain why in just a moment. Okay, so now we're going to make another surface. We're going to call this bottom left. We're not going to clone it yet, of course. And what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to click on my edit grid. And we're going to just match the two points right here. Notice a little magnet is on just to help with the snapping of the surfaces. I have to make sure it's perfect before I go and I start mapping the other. Okay, so there it is there. And again, we're going to right click. And we're going to duplicate it, and we're going to call it crop. Okay, so that being said, the next step, I'm just going to go ahead and do each individual layer. And what I'm going to do is the little parts in between the layers, I'm not going to worry about mapping right now, just because I want to show you a quick basics of how the cake mapping works, and then how you can go from there. But I'm just going to go ahead and do the other two top layers, and then we're going to start our actual assembly of these layers just like making a cake. the cake is done so that's pretty cool now we're gonna go into our crop panel I want to show you a little bit what the crop panel does so basically you'll see how each individual layer is basically a representation of this this is the full screen right here and you see it appear on each individual layer okay well that's great but what happens if you want to have everything work as one well we're gonna select the crop and then we're gonna click on copy from output basically it's going to take this and sample it here watch what happens See that there? And now you see that layer on the bottom left? Well, you see it here on the cake itself. Where I move it is that portion right there. So again, we're going to click Copy from Output. Great. 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 And Copy from Output. Great. So that means if you have a cake in that area or a video, then it'll be perfectly play to scale. If you select all of them, because I know people are going to ask, it does not show you all of them where you can easily resize it. Okay, so you see how that looks there. So you may say, well, I want to be able to just do the entire cake all in one. Okay, not a problem. So now that you've done that, you can easily map the whole thing. And notice I haven't done the top layer yet, and I'm really not, because usually when I'm doing projector mapping, unless I'm projector mapping the actual cake topper. I usually leave the cake topper by itself, otherwise we get some shadows. But again, that's up to each individual client and so forth. So now I'm going to make another surface. We're just going to call it cake or whole cake. So we'll just leave it as whole. We're going to, whoops, that's the crop layer, my bad. 
So we're just going to go here, here. And what this is going to do is this is basically going to do the entire cake in one shot. And because it's got those little magnetic snaps, it's going to snap to the surface I've already made. Now we need to add more grid points. So first we're going to make the crop panel disappear for now. And we are going to add grid points here. So this is horizontal and vertical. So we had horizontal points. There it is right there. And if we had a vertical point, here it is, here it is. And I know it's confusing because the line's going this way. So we're going to go ahead and add that. We're going to add that. And then we're going to add a horizontal point. I'm going to take that horizontal point, bring it there. And see what I'm doing is I'm basically painting with that. Now that's really going to skew the image. But again, that is what we're going to use our crop panels for. Okay. And then we've got that. So it's hitting it nicely. If you have two projectors, now you would take your other projector. And you would, hold on a second, there we go. Whoops. You would take your other projector and map the other side. We're going to take this. Now, if you've done projector mapping before, you're going to say, Arnaldo, there's a much better way of doing this. I am fully aware, but I'm doing this for people that haven't done this before. So bear with me. Here we go. This guy here just needs to be adjusted just a little bit. I'm going to go into my crop panel and we're going to copy from output. And I'm going to drag this. And I'm just going to have it kind of towards the center here. There we go. Perfect. Now, just to be safe, we're going to go ahead and export it. But with Grand VJ XT, you don't have to keep exporting it to import it into Grand VJ. We're just going to go ahead and click uh, save it here. We're just going to call it cake, 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 cake. Because I'm a DJ. All right. And we're going to just close out of there. Bam. Done. Look at that. Now, let's see what happens here. So on this side here, we have our mixer. We can do eight layers with the Grand VJ. And I can choose the outputs. Now, you'll see there's other outputs from other event, uh, mappers that I've done. But if I do the hole right there, okay, now the cake is fitting it beautifully. And this is where I would walk around and inspect the cake. And I would see, okay, maybe I need to correct this. I need to correct that. And I see a couple places where I really should correct it. But this is great for demonstration purposes as I need to. I really like visuals like this that have a lot of black in them. I don't want the cake to be lit up completely. Something like this, I mean, really makes that cake pop. If you want to invert it and do white with the visuals, that way the cake lights up too. Again, there's a lot of creative stuff that you can do with this, okay? Okay, so I went ahead and I changed my matrix uh, just real quick to load up some different videos so you guys can kind of get an idea. So the next thing we want to do is we want to hit the output screen. And we're going to click it just by clicking this little edit. And this little window here comes up that says transition or output. And then I'm going to click on edit group outputs. I'm going to create a new one. We're going to call it whole cake crop, which basically means that it's going to be every single crop panel. What this allows me to do is it allows me to take different cake or different cake, excuse me, different layers and group them into one. So I'm only playing one video or layer one at a time. So for example, I'm going to go from all outputs, right? If I chose just, for example, the bottom right crop, it appears there. If I chose it on the same one, but without the crop, then it's the whole thing. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how that crop panel works. But I'm gonna do the whole cake. And there it is there, all nice and pretty, but then the whole cake drop, and that's only that one portion. And of course, if I wanted to go and edit it, I can just go here, click out of there, I'm gonna click here, and then I can go into my position size, and then I can size it so it fits just that area. Now the reason that you would wanna do this is if you don't have enough time to do individual crop uh, layers or anything like that or do the whole cake, then you can just do it like this. And this also means that one projector could do the bride's cake and the groom's cake. Or this is really handy when you have one of those cakes where it's different tiers, but they're, in, they're around the table. They're not just in one section like you see with this particular cake. And then, of course, you can save that particular uh, setting and everything else however you have it. Okay, so now that we've done that, the next thing is we're just going to create another output. And we're going to edit the whole outputs again, and we're going to create a new one, and we're just going to call it cake whole non-crop. And this is just going to be all of them at the same time. I don't know why anybody would want to do this, but you've got that option of now 
having everything in individual layers. Now there are certain cases where this looks really cool. Let's say the party is going to be for a DJ and you want that equalizer type of effect, you would be able to have that on there if you wanted separately. Um, but for the most part, I personally like the individual whole cake crop. Now, where can you get really creative? Well, you can do different layers for different things. So, for example, you could have the top layers, right, the two top layers. You could have that be a slideshow, uh, maybe of the bride and groom together, different photos. You know, if you work with a photographer and they have the RAW plus JPEG mode, or if you have a fast RAW converter on your computer, you could take the photos that they have in JPEG form and make a quick slideshow and then drop it directly into Arceus. Now, Grand VJ does not do slideshows. You have to convert that into a video. But you would be able to do that and then have photos of them. You know, maybe the middle layer can be photos of them when he engaged. And then the bottom one could be photos of them as kids. So you could essentially tell the love story in the cake itself. Uh, with some cultures, you know, cake is very important as part of the actual wedding. So for those of you that do love stories, you could incorporate cake as a visual element of your love story. This is really good for intimate weddings, not weddings of three or 400 people because they all can't crowd around the cake. But this is more than just weddings. Corporate events. Are we celebrating a new CEO? Perhaps record high quarters and then we could actually make the cake look like, you know, it's, uh, what's it called, a profit chart. Or for a school dance, my goodness, you could do so many cool things with school dances. But this goes beyond just cake mapping. This goes beyond just putting pretty things on pastries. This is now stuff that you can do in a building. If you're doing, like, for example, I'm doing a Haunted Mansion theme, and we're going to have teachers sing, and we're going to record them against just a white background singing, and then I'm going to crop them out make it into a um, transparent layer. And then we're going to project and map them on mannequin heads to recreate Disney's Haunted Mansion when you go by the singing statues. So there are some really cool things that you can do with that. So essentially, again, what we're using is we're using Grand VJ XT. There's also Media Master, but both softwares insanely powerful. XT is very affordable, and you'll be able to do projector mapping right away. Again, make sure you get that XT plugin. So again, my name is Arnaldo Walkman. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, watching. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. My username is DJ Crazy Ace. Lots of great videos on there. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the This Jockey News Virtual Expo. Again, Grand VJ XT, distributed by ADJ, cake not included. Yeah. So, thank you all so much. Good night and God bless.